Jim from Beaver Creek Reserve again. Um, if you've tuned into some videos in the past, I've been doing some foraging videos. I thought I'd touch on some good summer beverages that you can make and enjoy. And I want to start with um, a native shrub. This is actually a native shrub called New Jersey Tea. And right now it's in full flower. And I wish you could see this because there are native bees and things all over the blossoms here. Now, it's a woody shrub and it grows in sandy areas. This is along the roadside, but it's pretty easy to recognize, especially when it's flowering right now with all these little umbels. But if you look at the leaf, there are three very prominent veins that run from the base almost all the way to the tip. Looks kind of like a dogwood leaf. You can use these leaves fresh or dry them and use them just like you would any other tea, a green tea or black tea or your favorite tea. It's one of our best native teas. Okay, the plant you're looking at is bee balm. Uh, Monarda is the genus name. They are in the mint family. They have square stems and I've got some here that are actually flowering. If you grab the stem, you can actually see it. It's a very square stem that's typical of members of the mint family, which bee balm is. Beautiful purple flowers. Um, bee balm, or Menarda, is actually a component of Earl Grey tea. You can use the leaves and put it in your tea mixtures, but, boy, if you give it a smell, it is really powerful stuff, so you don't need to use very much of it, but it's a great addition to any wild tea that you might want to make. Bee balm, and the bees, Absolutely love it. Butterflies and other pollinators too. Here's another native shrub to look for to make a wonderful tea out of. This is called sweet fern and you can see right now it's flowering. It's got these really cool looking flowers. But the leaves of sweet fern are very aromatic. If you take them and crumble them and smell them, it's hard to describe. It's a really sweet, uh, spicy smell. Just take the leaves though from the growing tips and don't get the stems, because if you get the stems, you get too much tannic acid and your tea will be kind of bitter and give you a dry mouth feel. So sweet fern, it looks like a fern, but it is a woody shrub. You can see the stems are pretty stout. And it grows in sandy areas along sand cuts and, and roadsides. It's a great tea. Well, we've already looked earlier at dandelions. We've looked at um, eating the flower buds and the leaves when they were early in the spring. But here's another use or dandelions that you might not think about, uh, but we need to get at the roots. So whether you use a screwdriver or a trowel or some kind of garden tool that you have, let's see if we can dig this one up. Now I'm digging this up along a road, which is not where I would um, necessarily suggest you dig your dandelions, but just because we can see the plant here, it was a good idea to try to dig it up here. So let's see what I've got. Oh, this one's got a nice, Nice tuber on it right here, nice root. And I'll show you what to do with that in just a little bit. Well, I dug up a few plants and uh, as you can see, not all dandelion are created equal. And it's impossible to tell what kind of a root you're gonna have when you dig it out. Here's a nice big one. There's a tiny one, sorta in between. I mean, you're gonna get all sizes. Don't worry about that. But the first thing we need to do is get rid of this dirt. That's on these things, so we'll give them a rinse to get the loose dirt off. Now you can see there's a lot of this cruddy looking stuff that's still sticking to the stems. You've got to get that off. So you can either use your fingers to scrape off that stuff. I'm going to see if one of my littler ones here has any. There's like a little sheath that sticks onto the outside of the root. And you need to scrape that off. You don't want any of that because that's got a lot of tannins in it. It'll make your uh, the coffee beverage that you're going to make from these kind of bitter. Let me give this another rinse now. Your, um, when you get the roots scraped off the way they should be, they should look nice and white like this with no none of that dark stuff on there. Okay, so here's what a cleaned root should look like. Nice and white with no dark spots. This is not a clean root. This is not a clean root. 
Again, you got to scrape all that stuff off. So now we're ready to start processing this to make a coffee-like beverage. Scraping that off with your fingernails, which is usually what I use. You can use a paring knife or something like that too. And you'll get that dark stuff off, but you just want to expose it so it looks nice, nice and light like that. Okay, so I've got the dandelion roots pretty much cleaned up, but I wanted to show you one step you need to take when you get them mint back inside. I'm going to trim off the top part. You're going to need a lot more than this, I can tell you that right now, before you can start making your dandelion root coffee. We'll get those tops out of the way. Now, this is one that I had before, and I said, you know, that looks pretty well clean, but if you take a knife or your fingernail and still scrape this, you can see there's a little bit of a skin that comes off, kind of like the skin on a peanut. And you want to get all of that off before you start to process these. So that's a final step that you need to take. Make sure they're nice and white and free from all of that stuff. Okay, so let's go over to the board then. The next step is pretty simple. I usually cut them into about one inch chunks and then try to get them sort of a uniform size. So these bigger ones, I'll maybe cut in half just so that they bake a little more uniformly. Yeah, we'll break that off. That's good enough. So that's a nice assortment. Then you put them on a baking sheet like this. You don't need to oil the sheet or anything. Into a 325, 350 degree oven, somewhere in there. Bake them for about um, 10 to 15 minutes. When it starts to smell like brownies, you know you're getting close to having them done. You want to make sure that they're dried up. And here's what you wind up with. And boy, if you give that a smell, it smells just like uh, just like brownies. Then I usually put these in a coffee mill, grind them up and use them just like I would um, coffee beans and make a delicious coffee-like beverage. No caffeine, sorry. That's sad. Okay, we've been talking about a lot of warm beverages that you can make, so here's one you're really gonna like, especially on huh, maybe the 90 degree days when it's really hot and muggy. Let's make some sumac lemonade. So here's sumac, and these are the developing fruits. Uh, these clusters are actually the fruits. They're made up of a bunch of berries. So you can tell how light pink this one is. It's not ripe yet. This one is starting to ripen. Now to find out if they're good for making lemonade, you take off one of the berries. That's, I don't know, not very big. A little smaller than the size of a pea and, and give it a taste. You don't eat it, but if it tastes really lemony and tart, it's a good cluster to use. So these are kind of small fruiting clusters. Usually they're about two or three times this size. But you should be able to just snap it off very easily and take the cluster with you. And then if you have three or four, well, this size would probably need six or seven, all you do is submerge them in uh, some cold water. Don't use hot water because it'll extract the tannins from the stem and make your drink really astringent, and you don't want that. You want a nice lemonade tasting drink. Here are a couple of sumac clusters that caught my eye. I'm going to see if I can get to it. There we go. This looks like one I might want to use. I'm going to give it a taste. Mmm. That's got some nice tartness to it. I think I'm going to harvest this one for my sumac lemonade. Okay, so here's one of those nice ripe fruit clusters. Um, I've already tasted the berries and they have a nice lemony tartness to them. So take four, five, six clusters about this size. If you have bigger clusters, use less. If you have smaller clusters, use more. But take three, four, five, six, whatever you're going to use, put them in a pitcher of cold water, not hot water. If you put them in hot water, it'll extract the tannins from the stem and it'll make your drink really astringent. However many clusters you use, submerge them in cold water, put it in your fridge for six, six to eight hours. There's really no magic formula. After that time, the lemony tartness will come out of the flower cluster. 
then you need to strain the liquid because if you look at this, these uh, berries, the little fruits are all full of these little hairs, and you don't want to have those in your sumac aid when you're drinking it. So strain those through a coffee filter, strain the liquid through a coffee filter, uh, add a little sugar to taste, and you've got a wonderful summer lemonade-like drink, sumac aid. Hey, everybody. As we're wrapping up this video on uh, summer wild beverages, a couple of things I forgot to mention that I should point out. Uh, one is, this is staghorn sumac. It is not poison sumac. I've had people who've taken my foraging classes, and they will not drink my sumac aid because they are afraid. They were told by their parents or grandparents, do not touch sumac because it's poison. Poison sumac grows in wetlands. It has clusters, very loose clusters of white berries, greenish white berries. Staghorn sumac does not grow in wetlands. It grows in dense stands, and it always has these fuzzy red berries. So don't worry about that. Something else that I didn't mention, when you put the flower heads into your pitcher to soak, make sure you get right in there and squeeze those berry clusters. That'll release a lot more of the yummy juices, that lemony flavor that you want to get extracted in there. A couple of um, other utensils that I like to use when I'm making teas, a French press is very handy. You take boiling water and uh, put your leaves in, pour the boiling water over, and you can press out the liquid. That's great. You can use an old-fashioned tea ball, pack it full. If you're using fresh leaves, you're going to need more than if you have dried leaves. Uh, this is a pretty cool one. This is a newer one. Uh, it's got a little screen on it. You just Cram your tea leaves in there, shut the lid, and this little plunger squeezes all the extra juice out. So, I hope you take a chance to get out and try some of these yummy summer beverages, and uh, have a good time. Thanks for stopping by. Hi, I'm Eric Keisler, Executive Director from Beaver Creek Reserve. Thanks for watching this great educational video from our staff. To find out more information like this and others, check out our website at beavercreekreserve.org. You can also support us by being a member or donating to our endowment campaign, which is supporting Beaver Creek through this COVID-19 crisis. Thank you. We appreciate your time.